Hey, it's Emily with the Wix Collective. Got my little buddy all snuggled in close for nap time. I thought, hey, I'm gonna jump on here and make a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time. And that is a video on Wix forms. How to use them, how to set them up, some common questions that you may have or that I run into along the way. And hopefully just give you a lot of tips and tricks so that you can have a successful form experience on your Wix website. So let's get started. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I'm gonna try to get to them as best as I can. Um, cause I know that everybody's Wix website bubble is a little bit different. So hopefully this video will cover most of the main topics you need to get started. Okay. Well, let's go. Okay. So when you get to your editor, you're going to go to either the page you want to add the form on, or I'm just going to go ahead and make a brand new page. Blank page. Again, you can choose from one of the templates if you so desire. This is just a Wix template that I picked up for presentation sake. So I'm gonna do contact form. All right, as you can see, I've done a couple other ones just preparing for this video. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the add button, scroll down to contact and forms, and Wix has several different forms available for you to choose from. So you can scroll through those and see if some of those are good for the function and style of your site. But just know that you can edit the forms to be your style, your content. If you wanna use like an online registration form for a contact form, whatever, you can change the intent of it, no problem. So I clicked it, added it to the page. Let's do the design first, and then we'll talk about the functionality. Also just disregard me bouncing. I just sit on this uh, bouncy yoga ball and it puts him right to sleep in this wrap. So it's an awesome nap time hack. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through how to change the design and look at this entire form. So it's really essentially just like anything else that you would edit on Wix. Click on it and you can, what I would recommend, click on the form itself, not an individual field, just click on the form and then click the design button. And here you can go in and customize the design. You can customize every single field. So you don't have to go in and change every individual one. This will just do like a broad brush over everything and it will change. So here you've got um, different heading, the different fonts. If we go here, it's going to change the title text. So I'm going to go with maybe something a little bit smaller. Now you're going to want to make sure that you hover is how you want it to be. The focus is how you want it to be. So when someone is clicking on a particular text field and focusing on that one and filling it out, this is how you differentiate it from the others. It looks like the border here is a little bit thinner than the original. So that's how you know you would know that you're on that particular spot. And you can come in here and change those designs anywhere you want. So let's say there's an error, we'll change it to a full on border so that that person knows exactly which piece of the form that they are missing. You can obviously change the look at the submit button as well. Again, it's just exactly like anywhere else on the Wix website that you would have any sort of design feature that you wanted to change, okay? Form background, submit button, okay. So now let's talk about getting into the content of the form. Again, if you want to change, you know, any of the text, you just click edit text, um, change the alignment. You can also add text boxes. If you want to click add text, if you want to do like a small heading underneath, you just drag and drop it and it attaches to the form. I'm going to delete that though, because I don't really like that. Um, okay, so let me show you how to add different fields to this form. Or yeah, let's do that first. So add new field, you're gonna click on the form, click add new field. And here's gonna take you through contact fields, basic fields and advanced fields, and also anti-spam. So contact fields, these will save to the contact card. So when you import this app, this Wix forms app, it's going to not only put the form on your website, but it also establishes the process of when someone submits the form, it connects it to a contact card, which is awesome. I love that Wix has its own like native apps so that everything talks to each other. Huge reason why I love Wix. It's so obnoxious. When I first started Wix, they didn't have Wix forms that were like beefy like they are now. Um, I had to use a different app and it was so hard to connect the two and it just caused a lot of problems. Okay, 
So when you want to add another field here, oops, sorry, you're gonna click add new field. Let's say we wanted to add a phone number, click add. Now it's gonna automatically add it below the last um, like field that you have listed. So what I recommend is if you have more contact information at the top, I'm just gonna delete these right now so that it just adds sequentially and keeps it really organized. So now I'm gonna click add new field phone, let's say you wanted an address, birthday terms checkbox, that's there as well. Okay, so that's an idea of what we got going on there. And as you can see, it's taken the design from these and applied it to those, which is such a relief. It used to not be that way. It used to be that you had to go in and change every box. So thankful that's not the case. Let's talk about the custom features that makes Lix forms awesome. You can add short answer field, long answer field, number field, radio buttons, checkbox, multi checkbox. So you can have a lot of different <laughs> features here, uh, which I love. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete some of these. The reason I'm deleting them is because, okay, he's okay. He's falling down. The reason is because you can only have so many fields, text fields and input fields on a free form. So then you'll have to upgrade the Ascend plan, which is a great investment. However, you know me, I always say go with the free stuff until it doesn't last any longer, it doesn't work for you. So do what you can with the free plan because if your website isn't actively bringing you in money, you just wanna save as much money as you possibly can. Okay, so let's go here to basic fields. Now, these are pretty self-explanatory long and short answer fields, but if you wanted to change, or if you wanted to add one of these multi, checkbox or checkbox field, and you have all these multiple items um, that you can choose from, you're gonna click edit field. Make sure to change your field title here if you want it to be something different, set it to required. This is the same for all the fields. If you wanna change the title, click on the field, click edit field, change the title here. You can add a placeholder text if you want to, or you can set it as required. Okay, so here, when you have multiple options, click manage choices. Okay, here you can add choices below. And then with these three little dots, you can uncheck or check by default. If you wanna be like, oh, hey, here's some recommendations that we would recommend as you're filling out the form, or you can duplicate them if that's easier, if you wanna add some multiple options there. I'll tell you what I do that's a lot easier, I think, I go here to add multiple choices. Where that was is at the bottom here. And then you just start typing in your choices. Make sure that you hit a return between each choice. And voila, it's going to automatically populate those for you. Okay, so that is how you do that. All right. Now, just a couple of things about these fields. Oh, I'm sorry, that was my phone. Um, a couple of things about these fields and how to edit them. Click on the field. Obviously, we talked about editing the field to show the field title. So if we said first names, okay, um, that's going to edit the title there. If you want to set it as required, that is where you hit that. It's going to give a little asterisk above it. And then you can also set your character limit if you wanted to. And then a placeholder text would be something like here, like type here. It will show below, okay? Now, another really important feature, and this will kind of move us into... Um, the technical side of things. You wanna click settings and you'll wanna double check that all of the name, um, the field names are correct. So if you are, if you're like, oh, I want another one and you duplicate this, instead of just adding a new field, it's gonna say, instead of email, it would say duplicate of email or copy of email. And that's not something you want because Wix is going to, behind the scenes, not only save these to a contact card, not only save them into your inboxes, form submissions, but it's also going to save it to, it looks kind of like an Excel document or like a numbers document. So you can see all of the submissions, the time of submission, all of that is going to be stored in a content um, contact file, content file. And so you wanna make sure that the labels of that contact content file are correct. I've done this wrong many times. So I'm just stressing to you, make sure that these are named what you want them to be. Like here, it's gonna say, choose your pizza toppings. So I'm gonna click edit or settings. 
and this is choose your pizza toppings. Now, sometimes it will just say choose an option. And so when you are, you know, when you upload or when you go to look at your content or your data that you collected, it's really confusing. You have to go back and find out what you were talking about. So, okay, that is something to really keep in mind. Now, um, obviously the submit button and then, oh, I forgot to tell you about the success message. I'm so sorry now that we're kind of wrapping up the end of the form. I guess it's a good time to talk about it, but the success message, if you wanted to change the text, you just change it here. And then you can click um, animate if you want it to animate in a certain way. But that is what shows up as soon as they submit the form. All right, now let's talk more. We touched a little bit on like the settings and the organization side of things behind the scenes, but let's just dive a little bit deeper. Click on form settings. Now, before you publish your form, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that everything here is how you want it to be. Otherwise, you're going to have a headache down the road. Select settings, make sure that this form is named exactly what you want it to be. So you can find it later. And then set email notifications. It's set to go to my email right now because I'm the owner, but you can change that as well there. Submissions table, now that is what I was telling you about is like that Excel or numbers style document that saves all of your submissions in one place. Now it's also going to update the contact card, send you an email, all those different things, but it's going to collect them and put them in that table as well, which is really helpful. So you can also set a form submission limit or a deadline, autofill form info, choose which you know is autofilled automatically. And then you can also do subscriber double opt-in. So that would be if they say, yes, I'd like to subscribe to your emails at the end of this form, then it would send them an email to double confirm. I don't recommend that unless you absolutely have to for some sort of um, maybe legal reason. I don't know. All right, so now submit message again, we changed, we could change it down here, or we could have it revert to another site page as soon as they fill out the form. It's like, oh, we'll take you to this page. You can also link them to an external URL. So if you wanted to link them to like maybe a YouTube video, like, hey, sign up and receive this YouTube video for free, you could send them to an unlisted YouTube video right there. You can also, if you have great to send, which I love this feature, instantly show a link of a file to download. So if it's something like an opt-in, like, hey, sign up for my free PDF of, you know, 10 reasons you need a website, then that would show them right there, download now. You can always set a time. So if you want it to just continually stay there, just click always. Or if you want it to just show for a certain amount of time, click eight seconds or whatever kind of seconds you want, however long you want it to be. I recommend it stays there always so they don't get confused about their submission. Okay, also to accept payments on a form, which is awesome. I just did this for a client. Um, they registered people for a particular coaching uh, session. And so we added payment at the end of it. Super cool, but you have to have the ascend plan. Conditions. Now this is where it can get a little bit interesting. So you can set conditional rules on your form. So when you add a new rule, you can choose say, okay, if they provide a phone number, this pops up. Or if we had something here below, if they choose this, this pops up below. So if you want to conditionally ask questions on your form based upon their answers, like, you know, um, do you have a website? If they click no, then I'll automatically have something that pops up that says, would you like a website? Now, if it's, if you have a website and they say yes, then that won't pop up. So how you do that is you select, let's say phone number. If they say, if it's filled out, then we could have something pop up. Well, we'll just have to go with choose your toppings here. Choose your pizza toppings is either shown, hidden, optional, or required. So I love that because, you know, if someone gave their phone number, you could say, hey, do you want to opt in for text messaging? All right, contacts. Now here is, um, you can choose the fields that are saved to the contact list. So right now we save all of this. We don't save their pizza toppings. Automations. Now I have an upcoming video all about automations, but if you want to send a thank you email, create a task or send a chat message, that is where you would start that process right there. And then email marketing. 
if you want to, you can create a newsletter or something here, but that's more of like an automation situation. Um, okay, so now let us move on to what it looks like behind the scenes. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my dashboard here and you're going to find, well, you're gonna to have to publish your website first. And then you can see here under communications, forms and submissions. Now, again, I mentioned that when someone sends a, up to, sorry, when someone fills out a form on your website, it's going to update their contact card or create a contact card. It's going to save underneath their contact cards, um, back and forth messaging. It's gonna to go to your inbox. And if you have it set to your email, it's gonna to go to your email. And then if you have, um, it's always going to be under the submissions table. So here you can see, as I was like, you know, playing around, I created a form called contact us, use submissions table. And here you can see where I filled in the table and you can go through and look through all of these different questions. And then you can also, and change the view here. I need to have an entire, I need to have a whole video on this um, content area because it's so vast. But here you can view, you can sort and filter, manage fields, etc. So it's just the coolest way to, oh yeah, you can also export as a CSV if that's something you need to do. If you need to you know, print off a document of all the people who signed up for this form for some reason, then that is where you would do that. All right. Um, tips and tricks, I guess, would be, let's go back here. Tips and tricks. Number one, make sure that you double check on mobile because let me just show you. As you click on mobile and as it lays out automatically, I think that the form text boxes are up really too close together. So you're going to want to come in here and manually move them down just a hair. See, that just that gives it more breathing room. And I think it just really helps a lot. And sometimes you might need to decrease or increase the size of the text, just depending upon how it looks on mobile. But make sure that that is right. OK, um, what else is a tip and trick? Let's see here. You can break up your phone form into different sections using text boxes. So let's say you have, you know, this contact us area, and then you want to talk more about, you know, what their needs are as a client. Well, then you click over here like we did before, click a text box, um, drag over either heading or paragraph, depending on what you're needing, or if you want to explain a little bit more about the upcoming questions, you can put that there. And I just really think that that is helpful as people are moving through maybe a long form, you know, so that it doesn't get overwhelming. They can know that, okay, I've just finished that process and now I'm moving on to the second part of the form. That's another tip and trick. Um, okay, one more tip that I want to give you that I've used in the past. If you're not wanting to upgrade an Ascend plan, but you want to offer a download at the end of the form, let's go to settings and success message, submit message. So right here, if you don't have the Ascend plan to link a file to download, what you can do is you can upload a file to Dropbox or Google Docs and then use that URL and link to an external URL there. So you can link to that Dropbox file or that Google Doc, Google file right there. So that will save you some money and hopefully help you to, you know, if you're looking to create an opt-in experience, that would be something you could do to save money and still have the full functionality. It, it will take them off your site, but at that point, I don't think it's as important, um, but it's up to you. If you want to upgrade a send, of course, do it. But if you want to save a little money, that is a way that you can. So if you are someone who loves Wix forms as much as I do and you have any other tips and tricks, oh, hey, buddy, feel free to share that below. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to list them below as well. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know um, if there's any other videos that I can make that would be helpful for you in building your Wix websites. I love Wix and I hope that your site is a success. So thank you so much for being here and I will see you again soon.